The Acolyte Episode 6 has been released and it sucks ass, and that's because the show is pointless. It has no idea as to what it wants to do, none of the characters have any real motivations, and what little they have keep changing every five minutes. Smilo Ren wants an apprentice but gives no reason why he does. Osha wanted to stop her sister but doesn't anymore, as she now wants to become Smilo Ren's cum dumpster. Mei wants to kill the Jedi, but then she doesn't, but then she does. And finally we have Sol, who wants to save Mei and Osha, but we don't even know why, as they're not really likeable, and haven't done anything for Sol to care about them this much. Quite the opposite, in fact. This show is also completely aimless, as the characters just jump from one scenario to the next, because the plot needs them to. Now the whole purpose of the Acolyte was to deconstruct both the Jedi and the Sith, but because the writers are so incompetent they have failed completely in the attempt. They never explore these concepts in any meaningful manner. No, they just have the characters say shallow, surface level interpretations about the Force and the Jedi, and that's it. No one discusses or debates the issues and ethics surrounding the Jedi, because even the writers don't understand what they do. The writers try to depict the Jedi as being oppressive, that they dogmatically make everyone think that their way is the only way, but when we see the witch cult who are supposed to be persecuted victims, it turns out that they are way worse than the Jedi. They use the force to torture someone who wasn't even a threat to them. They make force babies but only seem to keep the girls. And what do they do with the boys? Who knows, but I don't see any orphanages nearby. The Jedi don't do that, they offer families a choice to join them. You know, unlike the witch cult who refuse to let children leave once they become witches. They purposefully did not expose the children to the rest of the galaxy so that they would be easier to manipulate into thinking that this is what they want. Whereas the Jedi allowed Osha to leave the Order whenever she wanted. And when it comes to the Sith, all Smilo Ren says is that he wants freedom, and yet he's shown to enjoy killing people. So how are the Sith any different now than every other time we have seen them? The only difference is that he's going to be in yet another shit Raylo romance between him and Osha. And seriously, what the fuck is wrong with the women in Star Wars trying to fuck psychopathic murderers all the time? Do none of them have any dads? Oh right, Rey grew up alone and Osha and Mei grew up in an all-female environment. Now it makes total sense. Anyway, with all that said, let's break down this dog shit episode. There are three plot lines to follow, and each one is more boring and retarded than the last. The A plot follows Osha, who wakes up on an unknown planet that the writers have pointlessly called the Unknown Planet. Why? Now, this world looks identical to the same shithole that Luke Skywalker committed suicide on, and these aliens look like tiny versions of the giant titty milk monster he drinks from. So is this the same planet or not? It doesn't matter, as Osha, who was knocked out after being pushed off a three-foot ledge onto some soft mud, was carried all the way to his ship, taken to another planet and put into a cave, in the same amount of time that it took for Sol to reach his ship in orbit. Well, that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. Distance means absolutely nothing in the Star Wars universe, because everyone just races across the galaxy in no time flat. Osha wakes up and follows him to a pool as he goes for a dip. This is just an excuse for him to take his shirt off, because Hollywood has a double standard when it comes to nudity, which this show has done twice. He goes on to tell Osha what she's feeling, because once again, characters have to outright tell you what is going on, instead of just showing you in either their mannerisms or their actions. I'm wondering if it's honourable to kill me like this. That's so fucking lazy. She is then offered to take his ship and leave. Wait a minute, I don't see any other starships around here. So, is he actually gambling that she stays with him, the man who murdered her friends to not just take his ship and leave him stranded here? Because if that's his plan, it's fucking retarded. Luckily for him, she doesn't, and the pair of them go back to the cave where Osha finally brings up the fact that he killed her friends. Better late than never, I guess. But his response is just terrible, as he tries to justify it by saying they deserved it. He says Yor deserved to die because he tried to arrest Osha in the first episode for the murder of Carrie Ann Moss, totally ignoring the fact that once he knew May was the killer, he let her go. You killed Yord. A man who didn't hesitate to turn you in for a crime you didn't commit. That's fucking stupid. 
but his defence for the death of X-23 is even worse, as it amounts to, oh well, you couldn't be friends with her anyway because she's a Jedi. You killed Jackie. You would have had the same relationship with her that you have with your master. One-sided. What are you, fucking stupid? Not only is this not a defence, but this should actually piss Osha off even more, considering that X-23 was a young girl, and she was a part of the rescue mission that helped save her life. Darth Dickhead is supposed to be trying to convince Osha to come to the dark side, but is making the most retarded arguments possible. Why is everyone so fucking stupid? Osha then runs out of the cave, and even though Smilo Ren tells her to try and kill him, she doesn't because he's unarmed. A Jedi doesn't attack the unarmed. Ah. How many times do I have to point this out? He's never unarmed when he has the Force, and even if he didn't, we've seen what he can do with his bare hands. There is absolutely no reason for her not to kill him, and yet she doesn't, because the rest of the plot needs to happen. Christ, who wrote this? Osha also shows us just how little she cares about her friends, as when he points out that she failed as a Jedi, she is way more upset about that insult than him actually murdering her friends. I can't. Osha seems to only care about herself or what affects her. Later that night, he reveals that the armour is made out of Cortosis, which would make this the first time Cortosis has been established in live-action Star Wars. The problem is that all he says it can do is stop lightsabers, not that it's rare or hard to make or anything like that, which doesn't answer the question, if this exists then why doesn't everyone use it? The expanded universe is no longer canon, and it can do stuff now that it never could do in Legends, like block out the Force. So the show should establish what the limitations of Cortosis are, but they don't, because they don't think any of this shit through. Also, he said that it stops lightsabers, but we can see him clearly welding it with a plasma torch. How? Shouldn't that also short circuit as well? I don't know. I don't know. So Smilo Ren goes on to say that his helmet leaves the person wearing it both blind and deaf as it blocks out all of their senses, and that he has to be able to use the force to see. The problem with that, however, is that last episode, Smilo Ren's helmet stops Sol from reading his mind by basically blocking out the Force. So, if the helmet is basically Force-proof, then how can he use the Force to see? I don't fucking know. Not just that, but how can he have conversations with people when he's deaf wearing it? Once again, none of this makes any sense. Anyway, May puts on the helmet and breathes just like Darth Vader does, because the show lacks any sort of originality, and that's the end of the A plotline. Moving on to the B plot, it follows Sol and May as he is on the ship after he left all of the Jedi bodies on the planet below to be eaten by the giant man-eating insects. Sol contacts the Jedi Order and tells them that his entire team have been killed, but for some reason doesn't tell them that it was done by a Sith. What? I tell you why. I don't know. Sol, who is a Jedi Master, by the way, has a complete emotional breakdown and is hugging, punching and crying all episode. A moment of weakness would be fine since his whole team died, but he's supposed to be a Jedi Master. He should take a moment to catch his breath and compose himself. But no, he's just an emotional tampon at this point, telling Mei just how amazing she is. You saved us, Sosha. You saved me. Uh... Which is even more annoying when you think about it, since if he has such a strong attachment to Osha, then how does he not know that it's May in disguise? Who gives a shit? But I guess he's not the only idiot on the ship, as May has many opportunities to kill him, but ends up doing nothing except being attacked by a large rodent that tries to hump her leg at the same time she is squirted in the face with some robot jizz. Now I find it hilarious that Leslie Headland, Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, wrote a scene where a young actress gets dry humped and spunked on. Well, write what you know, I guess, and Leslie must know some really dark shit from her previous boss. This scene also explains how a bad actress like Amandala got the job in the first place, as we're probably seeing a recreation of her audition tape. So May goes on to ask about what he did at the stone temple that caught fire when she was a kid, but is interrupted when the power comes back on. This is just a lazy way to pad out the episode, because there are more than a few times where a character is finally going to give us some goddamn answers, but are either interrupted by an event, or just walk away mid-conversation. Wow, that's really lazy. Fuck me, as if this plot couldn't move any slower. 
so if the power back on, May tries to contact the Jedi for no reason, and Sol stuns her because he's figured out that she's not Osha. And how did he deduce such a mystery? Did he notice the massive tattoo she had on her forehead? Or is it that she never mentions Yord and X-23's deaths despite being their friend? Or is it because she's been acting like a fucking robot this entire time? No, it's none of these things, he just figures it out, and the only hint we have is the large rodent standing behind him, which I don't even know how he could tell him, since Yord was the only person who could speak his language. Sol then ties her to a table and says that he will tell her everything next episode because that's the end of his shit storyline. I don't give a fuck. Lastly, we come to the C plot, which follows this green bitch and her Padawan Mog, as she is currently doing retarded politics with the Senate. Why are the Senate talking to her and not the Jedi Council? I don't know. So she gets Sol's distress beacon and takes Mog, her incredibly stupid Padawan, with her, who believes that everyone died in a bunch of accidents, like a fucking Looney Tunes sketch. I'm sure that these casualties are due to the planet's uncharted environment. Are you fucking stupid? So in less than a minute, they hop across the galaxy and land on the planet, and even though the Jedi needed the giant rodent to track down where the Wookiee was living, for some reason this green bitch doesn't, and manages to easily find the Wookiee's hut almost immediately. Oh, how convenient. Not just that, but she goes full girl boss mode and kills an insect with her lightsaber whip, because she is just that amazing. I don't give a fuck. Now I know lightsaber whips are a thing in the expanded universe, but I find them completely retarded, since how the fuck are you supposed to use these things practically? I mean, you can't use a whip in tight spaces, such as on a ship, inside buildings, or in this case in a forest, as the trees might fall on you. You also wouldn't be as good at deflecting blaster shots as well as you could with a normal lightsaber. And worst of all, you wouldn't be able to use them around civilians and allies as well, because you'd probably hit one of them. They are simply worse than normal lightsabers in every single way. But fuck it, who cares at this point? So they bury the bodies Sol never did, because he jumped to hyperspace a minute before they arrived for absolutely no reason. Well that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. This terrible piece of writing is also that they could suspect Sol of being the killer, which makes no sense because he told the Jedi to come to this planet, as they were in pursuit of Mei and her master, but none of the Jedi seem to remember that. And that's the end of episode 6. That was shit! In short, nothing happened for this entire episode, apart from the fact that Osha doesn't give a shit that her friends were murdered, and immediately wants to fuck their killer, all because the writers are trying to pander to the retarded Raylo fans. Sol uncovered that Mei was pretending to be Osha because she is an absolutely shit actor, and Jedi Master Greenbitch suspects Sol of being a traitor because for absolutely no reason he ran away and chose not to tell them about the Sith. At this point, I don't know what's worse, every one of these Star Wars shows that have been god fucking awful or the shills that defend it. You know, because they make stupid articles such as the word Sith is a slayer invented by the Jedi, or the usual fan blaming they do all the time. Both of them are terrible, and they both deserve to die. Anyway, that was episode 6 of The Acolyte. It's a piece of shit.